didn't feel like anything I hadn't seen before, and usually that's not something I have a problem with, but in this case, I couldn't find myself connecting to the characters. While there's no denying that Nezuko is adorable and a pleasure to watch whenever she's on screen, her dangerous nature and lack of a conscious mind kind of relegated her to the background, because she's a plot device. So with that, I was just left with Tanjiro. I understood that Tanjiro was a kind older brother that was just trying to do his best amongst his tragic circumstances, but that was it. There's been tons of bland anime protagonists whose only standout trait is that they're kind. So at first, I wasn't really sure what made Tanjiro any different. But once the other supporting characters were introduced, that's when I understood that I actually understood nothing at all. I... nothing. Nothing. What sets Tanjiro apart is that his kindness truly feels authentic, but this is most accentuated by his interactions with Zenitsu and Inosuke, specifically in the episode where they go to the Wisteria Inn together. This is the first time in the series that you can see Tanjiro have a moment of levity and just be himself around other people outside of his family. And almost naturally, Tanjiro fits right in as the balance between these two crazy lovable idiots, and the dynamic that they form is truly a blast to watch. Even though Tanjiro spends most of the time reprimanding them and keeping them in line, he never actually gets mad at them. In a way, he treats them like they're his younger siblings. One of the best examples of this is when Inosuke brazenly takes Tanjiro's food and eats it in front of him, and Tanjiro's response is to gladly offer him the rest. It's in this moment that you can see that there's a certain warmth and generosity in the way Tanjiro treats them that can only be defined as that of an older brother. This is when I realized how much being an older brother defines Tanjiro's character and his kind disposition. From early on in life, he learned, as most older siblings do, that it's not just about what he wanted, but about looking after his family, setting an example for his younger siblings, and being a second parent when his father wasn't around anymore. Having to play this role molded Tanjiro to develop a sense of duty, sacrifice, and conformity. Being there for his younger siblings became his responsibility. So imagine how it felt when he failed to be there, stripped of the chance to even lift a finger to protect his family. The weight on his shoulders must have felt unbearable, to the point that it would have driven any sane person over the edge to be consumed by despair and eventually filled with hate for the one who did it. But somehow, Tanjiro is able to retain his sense of self, his gentle compassion. This is only possible because of his younger sister Nezuko, who despite having become a demon, is the one linked to his humanity and what keeps him going forward in the darkness. Nezuko's continued existence allows him to keep being the only thing his family ever entrusted him to be, which is a good older brother. This allows the story to be less about revenge and more about finding salvation, and not just for Nezuko's condition, but for all of the people that have been hurt by demons, including the demons themselves. Throughout the show, we get so many scenes focusing on the suffering the demons experience in their past lives, not really to justify their actions, but just as a reminder that they were once human too. And from the beginning, I wondered why the author chose to portray the demons as being originally human as opposed to just being purely supernatural beings. And then that's when I realized that the demons are supposed to be a metaphor for the entire human race, representing the darkest parts of ourselves and how evil we can become. And having hunters that view the demons' lives as filth rather than a tragedy only serves to breed hatred and self-righteousness. That's why Tanjiro's compassionate demeanor towards them is so important and valuable. Without any hesitation, he extends a handout to console a dying demon. The truth Demon Slayer is trying to get at is that the most powerful weapon one can wield is not a blade that can destroy demons, but rather, kindness. After all, it goes to great lengths to show us that we're all just one bad day away from becoming demons too. As we saw with the demon Kogai, who really just wanted someone to appreciate his writing, or with the demon Rui, who just wanted to apologize to his parents. In the show's eyes, real demons don't actually exist because the demons are us. What greater enemy is there than humanity itself? The point that it's trying to make is that kindness requires looking past your own personal grief and misfortune in order to extend your hand out to those that are suffering. Because in life, suffering is common. We all suffer. That's why the cruelest thing you can do is inflict suffering on someone else, knowing that you yourself are a victim to it. And the mark of true kindness comes in alleviating someone's suffering in spite of your own, even if for just a moment. Because none of us can escape suffering, but that doesn't strip us of the capacity of helping each other through it, giving each other hope, or just letting each other know that we belong. Kindness is the most powerful weapon, but at the same time the most difficult to wield when emotions like hate and selfishness come so easily. Villainizing and justifying is just 
just another excuse, but to try to understand one another, that takes strength. Strength that Tanjiro had to gain. At the start, Urokudaki calls him slow and indecisive because he's too kind. It's not kindness, it's softness. Softness is innate. We're all born soft. Kindness, on the other hand, is a choice that can only be seen in our actions. At the start, Tanjiro's just a boy filled with desperation to save his sister, but doesn't know what he has to sacrifice to make that happen. Later, when he becomes a man in Sabito's eyes, he still bears the same compassion, but this time, he has resolve. Resolve is a distinguishing factor between a victim and a warrior. He still possesses that same kindness of an older brother that came from a warm family, but now he can actually do something with it. Meaning that no matter how kind-hearted he is, or how much he doesn't like to hurt others, he'll clench his fist and bravely charge forward to protect what he believes is right, while still never letting himself believe he's above his opponent's suffering. That takes strength. That's kindness. Part of being the oldest sibling is often being the unsung hero in the family. Without much of a choice, you bear the brunt of your parents' expectations so that the younger ones can be free to live their lives the way they want. However, you learn to embrace it because getting to see your siblings grow and live a life that they chose is worth the cost. That's why for all the other siblings he failed, Tanjiro will do anything to make sure Nezuko gets a chance to choose her path in life, even if it costs him his. Because that's just what it means to be an older brother. You look out for your family regardless if you ever get a thank you. Your thank you is their well-being. Being the youngest in my family, it wasn't until I was able to see myself in Inosuke and Zenitsu that I was able to appreciate Tanjiro's selfless nature. And the fact that he was so understanding of other people's hardships without ever making it about his own really reminded me of the times my older siblings have gone out of their way for me without as much as a complaint, even though I never really understood it. It's easy to go through life taking kindness for granted because receiving it is easy. Giving it requires effort. How much effort? Well, what I've learned from Tanjiro and the demons he's faced is that the greatest gift you can give to someone isn't really a grand gesture, but just showing them that you care. Hey guys, that's it for this video. 